All right, hello and welcome to another Mr. Pistol Plays Magic the Gathering Arena Brawl Deck Tech and Gameplay Session. If you're new to the channel, after you see this, maybe hit that like button, subscribe, notify so you can see my content. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. We are playing Brunor Battle Hammer. Uh, one of my buddies who's also, he's a streamer, he has a YouTube channel, he plays Dark Souls, um, Caustic Acid, his link will be in the description below. Really cool guy. One of his favorite commanders from the set is Brunor Battlehammer, so I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. So for each equip, each creature you control gets plus two plus O for each equipment attached to it. You may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost for the first equipped ability you activate each turn. So we have a decent number of um, of those equipments, along with a bunch of things that kind of support the equipment theme. All right, let's get into the cards. We're going equipments. Creatures, spells, lands, games. All right, let's do this. So in the equipment, we have Boots of Speed. This gives plus 1, plus 0 in haste. If Brunor is out, equipping this for 0 on a creature that you just cast is very, very powerful. Uh, Cliff, Hi Cliff Haven Kite Sail, 1 mana. When it enters the battlefield, it attaches for free for the first time. And it gives your creature flying, so you can get over things and then Brunor... And play zero mana to give your things flying we have shadow spear which i think is probably one of the more powerful cards in the deck one mana it's two to equip it gives your creature plus one plus one has trample and lifelink so with bruin or out you're giving plus two or plus three plus one and the trample so you can get over things and the lifelink keeps you in the game we have dancing sword as a two mana equipment it costs one to the equip and gives plus two plus one and then when the equipped creature dies you can turn this into a two one construct artifact creature with flying and ward one if you do it isn't an equipment anymore so it's an equipment that can turn into a creature in the late games to help you continue beating down or it just is a good general equipment that gives you a little bit of power and toughness mirror shield two mana two to equip it gives your creature plus zero plus two and has hexproof and also destroys death touch creatures if it's blocked by a death touch creature or becomes blocked by one so it's a uh, kind of the killer of the death touch but also gives hexproof which is a very important thing maul of the skyclaves standard staple uh three mana equips for free gives plus two plus two flying and first strike it's great on attacking it's great blocking and if you need to equip it again it costs four but remember brunor can skip that four if it's the first one you do and we have some one of the newer ones plate mail it's a three mana gives plus three plus three and has ward one and it's equipped three but this ability costs one less to activate for each other equipment you control so in some cases you may not even need brunor to make this a zero cost you could just equip for free we do have a decent amount of equipment in the deck so um yeah it's just i think it has some it's very powerful in a deck like this then we have the one the only ember cleave six mana but it costs one less to cast for each creature attacking creature you control it has flash it equips when it enters and it gives plus one plus one double strike and trample and it costs three normally to equip uh brunar can make that zero so those are the equipments i picked for the deck let me know what you think uh any equipment i might have missed any equipment you think should be added we have a couple we have three things that either search for an equipment or become an equipment and that's the next step so we have fighter class when it enters the battlefield uh, search your library for an equipment card reveal it put it into your hand and shuffle your library so you can find whatever equipment you need for the uh scenario that you're in then we have alvar god of battle with his sword of the realms it's a his sword is a two mana equipment it costs two to equip that creature gets plus two plus owen has vigilance and they, when the creature dies, you return that creature to its owner's hand. But we also have Halvar got a battle, 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike. So in many cases, the Halvar side is probably the stronger of the two sides that you're going to want to be casting. But if you do need an equipment and you want to start beating down, this sword is a viable option. Then we have Ice Death Frost Tyrant, one of the new legendary dragons in the set. 4 mana, 4-3, four, it has Flying and Vigilance. And the key thing is when it dies, you get an equipment that gives plus 2, plus 0. And whenever a creature attacks, tap target creature defending player controls. So this is like the gift that keeps on giving. It helps you get damage in. And that sword is called the Ice Death of Ice Death Frost Tongue. 
But those are all the equipment y things in the deck. Let's get into some creatures. We have mainly warriors. We're having a sub a warrior sub theme because we have Nahiri, heir of the ancients, four mana, four loyalty. Plus one creates a one one core warrior creature token. You can attach an equipment you control to it. Minus two, look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a warrior or an equipment card from among them. Put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this has a decent amount of hits. One, two, three, four, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen ish hits. So that's a good chunk of our deck. Um, and seeing six of them is very reasonable to hit. It also has a minus three, it deals uh, damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to twice the number of equipment you control so we can deal a decent amount of damage there starting with those warriors we have usher the fallen one mana two one it has boast creates a one one human warrior creature token so after you attack you can use the boast ability you don't have another two drop to play or something to play on two you can make a one one we have fireblade charger a one mana one one and it has haste if it's equipped and uh, when it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So if we load this up with equipments, we can throw some good damage around. Core Blade Master, I think this is one of the MVPs of the deck. Two mana, one one, double strike. Equipped warriors you control have double strike. So the, a lot of our creatures are warriors. So and getting them equipped is the name of the deck. So hopefully this card can uh, show its worth. Season Hollow Blade, two mana, three one. Discard a card, tapped. Tap season hollow blade against indestructible to the end of turn so it's a good beater when we have our equipments on it we will probably have a card that we don't need but so being able to give this indestructible is just on repeat excuse me repeated damage Cargan intimidator two mana three one it's a human warrior cowards can't block warriors so you can turn one of their creatures into a coward by paying one uh generic mana and or you can give card intimidator plus one plus one until the end of turn and target warrior gains trample until the end of turn so if this is out and you're attacking with something else you can make that creature unblockable as long as it's one of our warriors but you could also give it trample so you can get through the last amounts of damage so it has a lot of utility in a deck like this cold forge master two mana two two dwarf warrior never another non-token creature you control dies if it was enchanted or equipped return it to its owner's hand so very similar to halvard's blade in that we can freely in some ways freely attack or freely block when other um, creatures we control and if they die if a creature token you control is enchanted or equipped it gets plus one plus one there may be some times when that's relevant for the most part we are playing it for the top one then we have seer grid god favored three mana two two flash first strike protection from god creatures when it enters the battlefield exile up to one target attacking or blocking creature until seer grid leaves the battlefield so it helps slow down our opponents get something big out of the way and also can protect our creatures in combat we have Akiri, Fearless Voyager, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, or Warrior. Whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. So we're hopefully we're generating card advantage with this card. Uh, you can pay a white and unattach an equipment from a creature you control. You do tap that creature and it gains indestructible until the end of turn. So another way to protect our creatures. I put Starnheim Unleashed in this category. As for 4 mana, you can make a 4-4 four, four Angel Warrior creature token. So it's... Uh, creature it's a warrior creature and then uh if we put play to foretell cost you can pay xx and white and get two three four five warriors depending on how much mana you have we already went over nahiri let's go into the non-warrior creatures and then the spells so we have luminarch aspirant making our creatures bigger every turn two mana one one mila crafty companion is more card advantage um also if someone attacks our Nahiri, if we have Luna or Mila out there, you put a loyalty counter on your um, Planeswalker for each attacking creature. Whenever a permanent you control becomes a target of spiller ability and opponent controls, you may draw a card. Luca, Wayward Bonder, 6 mana, 5 loyalty Planeswalker. More than likely not going to cast this side, but you never know. Plus 1, discard a card. If you do, draw a card. If it's a creature card, discard it this way. You draw 2 cards instead. Usually you want to cast your creatures 
maybe if you're in a pinch and you're digging for a specific one do that you can return a target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield it gains haste exile at the beginning of your next end step and it's minus seven you get an emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control it deals damage equal to its power to any target so you can get to that minus seven that's probably game winning but um more often than not we're casting mila then we have bone crusher giant dealing two damage with its stomp and becoming a four three that deals damage to any person any creep person who targets it Blade Historian comes down, gives all cre attacking creatures double strike. Bane Slayer Angel, five mana, five, five. First strike flying. Lifelink protection from demons, protection from dragons. It's just a big, beefy creature that we want to equip up. Same goals for Goldspan Dragon, five mana, four, four, flying haste. And it creates tokens, with, treasure tokens when it's attacked or becomes targeted. And you can sacrifice tokens to add two mana instead of one. We have some spells. We have Resolute Strike. If we target a warrior, you get to equip a uh, enchantment to it. Scorching Dragonfire just deals three damage and exiles the creature if it dies. Or Planeswalker. Rip apart three damage to a creature Planeswalker. Destroy artifact or enchantment. Banishing Lathe exiles a non-land permanent. Gets it out of the way until it leaves. Soul Seer deals five damage to a creature of Planeswalker. And it can help us get rid of things that are indestructible, which is quite handy. Uh, Shadow Showdown of the Scalds, one of our other card advantage engines. So when it f comes into play, you exile four cards of your library, and you can play those cards until your next turn. It's two and a three. Whenever you cast a spell, put a one-one counter on target creature you control. It helps build up our creatures to make them bigger. Lorehole Command is Moldal. You get to choose two of them. You make a three-two creature. Or you can give all your creatures plus one plus oh indestructible and haste until the end of turn you can deal three damage to add target and you get to gain three life you can sacrifice a permanent then draw two cards so it's very very flexible in what it can do and the last card in the deck is heliod's intervention uh white white x you're destroying x target artifacts on enchantments or you're gaining twice x life probably the first one then we have the castles both castles we have both creature lands we have planes we have six planes five six mountains we have the axe guard armory which can search for an aura or an equipment card put it into our hand we have field of ruin which help fixes our mana if we need to but also destroys a pesky pesky opponent's land we have the snarl the campus pathway the temple command tower and fabled passage that is bruno or battle hammer all right let's dive into a couple games all right, this can be an interesting matchup. We can find an equipment. We are a little bit slow, but we do have a removal spell to catch us up. Um, they get to go first. We are up against Exodus and Awaken the Blood Avatar. That can be aggro, but it can also be a little bit controlly. Uh, they chose to mulligan, I think. Look like. I think we should probably mulligan too. This doesn't look better, but it's it's uh, we'll keep it. Maybe it wasn't the best keep, but there's a land. I still think we do this and we go find a. Now we can go find the planes. We got some double whites going on here. We have a removal spell. We also could play down Lord of the Realms. Might not be a bad decision. I think we're binning this. Uh, we'll do this. Let's get ourselves. Should we make ourselves hasty? Probably or must mall. I think malls malls a good option. It's not too expensive The other ones are a little expensive It's kind of a greedy card to play in a essentially three color deck Taking their sweet 
Sweet time. Ah, that's a very powerful card to discard. Do we just do this? We we'll blow up this. We may want to save that for later. Poor toughness kinda of gets it gets it out of our I think we're going to play down the sword. We can just play this, because if we get to this, then we can equip it for free. This also returns us to our hand if we need to. I think I'm gonna maul, even though it doesn't kind of even though it equips it itself for free normally. We can also Nahiri plus and then attach that. Give them a target or some removal if they wish. Um, I think they're gearing up for this Awaken the Blood Avatar. Would be my guess. Maybe we should have got the lifelink key thing. All right, land. That is not a land. We can do this. Exiles that. Also makes it so they have one less thing to sacrifice. I think I'm going to go Bruinor into Halvar, attacking for a lot. So remember that has indestructible. Guess we're jamming this. All right, lands. Our curve is fairly low, so we're only on, we're on 22 lands, which is usually okay. You can awaken the blood avatar now. But you probably want to wait until we've played something. This makes this edict edicts us to. Over on the Exodus plan now. All right, if they exit us, well, they can't. If they destroy this, which I'm assuming they should, well, probably like poison the cup. Disenchant. Okay. What is that? Doomscar? Oh. Oh. Huh. That's one plus one and double strike. Well, we can do this. Let's get in there. We're not dead next turn. A lot of damage. Or eight. 
off. We're not dead. The next turn we can play Halvar's sword equip and we can rip apart this don't have enough to escape this yet do they have another disenchant effect i guess any removal kills us too sure that gets rid of your whole board too This has haste and attacks for 10. If this is not a removal spell, I think we win this one. They don't, do they have it? Hmm. Mm. I guess it's this? I think it's Nahiri. They have to block this. Plus 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think we're dead. Oh, so close. And we had it next game too. What a match. All right. That was a very good game. All right. Let's get into another one. I think this is a keepable hand. It would be nice to draw an equipment. But we have two drop. We got two removal spells, a pump spell. We're up against Faraday. The, um, here, we'll show you this dice rolling deck. Definitely on the docket. Definitely something that looks fun. Okay. Oh, this is gonna count. This is gonna hurt a bit, I think. All right, let's offer up the block. And then we'll do that. And they'll quit. All right. Let's do it again. All right. Do we have what it takes to joust with five color? Uh, yeah, this looks good. It's a very powerful start. I'll scry. We'll keep a land. As long as I don't have too much removal. Mountain and we'll get the battle master going And start pumping uh, it up It's gonna start hitting hard In for four If we play, if we draw land, Light Tutor, which one of the 
shrines are there gonna find? Ah, uh, fires. That is an annoying card. Um, do we bard for the life linking one? I think we do. Or I think actually we're gonna play sword. Because if we draw land, we can. We can brew an or equip and deal lots of damage. They're gonna play this. And fingers crossed they don't have. Oh. Okay. Next turn, we put the counter here. Phase out the core battle master. Mm -hmm. This goes here. That goes there. This looks comforting. You have a board wipe? <laughs> That's phased out though. Oh. Oh. You can what? Get gain? You're gonna start gaining life? Ugh. Land. I think we do this. We can start drawing cards too. Into this? Or do we give it plus one plus one trample and lifelink? No, we can't get through then. I think we definitely, it's definitely this. I would not be surprised I gain five life here Still deal ten Boy, now you can cast two spells. There's one. It discarded the ma what? What do you have? Well, you gain, you can gain 10 life now. Mm. This. We'll do this. You can go to what 19 can't counter it Is this 
gonna do exactly no this is does like a metric butt ton at 22 you're dead good game mr kenrith this is the power of brunor and core blade master gain your 10. Wow, we had two fantastic games and one where the person decided that they didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> Brunor, as you can tell, it almost got through a very grindy Exodus kind of matchup. And we ran over Kenrith, even when they got to play free spells. Maybe playing that, um, what's it called? Fires of Intervention was, um, might not have been the right card for them to take. But uh, you could see the power of Core Blade Master, the double striking, and Brewer Nor with just two. We dealt 22 damage. All right, that is my Brewer Nor deck. Take it if you want it, make it your own. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. Mr. Pisto to you. Take care. Bye for now.